Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall, where using my SKG discount code leads to a 25% off across several products, making a Windows 10 serial key only $16. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and all you need to do is to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. Hello guys, this is Game Plays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. So today we have a video of 7 things that I would like to see changed or inserted like um, inserted. Mm. Changed or added inside the Radeon software or the Radeon drivers. Okay, and getting all the bullshit, let's go to the first one. So the first one is a new codec. And when I say a new codec, it is mostly for streaming, because as you know, AMD has the AVC codec, which is the H264, and we have the HEVC codec, which is the H265. For example, when the video bitrate uh, is lower in situations where you have for example dark backgrounds dark colors you can see when when it changes in between colors you can see those bulky things like those squares uh, in the image that's due to having lower video bitrate and the H265 or the AGVC does better in that situations in those situations so once again AGVC with the same bitrate and same resolution will perform better because it is a more efficient codec so, like NVIDIA has the, N the NVENC, I like to call it NVENC, N-V-N-E-C, which is uh, better, but we can actually use NVENC in streaming and recording. And for AMD, we can just use the AGVC, which is way better for recording only and not for streaming. So AMD should at least go and put also the AGVC codec for streaming as well. That's my opinion. In the latest drivers, the 22.3.21, I think, they improved the codec a bit, I have to admit it. It has improved a bit, the recording and so on, but we still need it for streaming, okay? That's the first thing. Now, the second thing that I would like to, to be changed is basically the RSR, which was introduced for the RDNA 1 and RDNA 2 cards, with the 22.3.1 drivers. Basically, RSR means Radeon Super Resolution and it works uh, more or less like the FSR, which is the Fidelity FX Super Resolution, that works like the, the LSS on NVIDIA and so on. The only thing is that the RSR works in almost any game due to driver input, okay? So it works via drivers and not in the game engine implemented by the developers. It works with the drivers. But there's a catch. Basically, with FSR, all you need to do is go into the game, select your resolution, and then go activate FSR and select the several types, the several options you have. You have, for example, the performance, uh, the quality, the ultra quality, and one more mode, I think. Uh, but basically, what FSR does is that it reduces the rendered resolution and then upscales it to your native resolution. While with RSR you have to do things differently. You have to go into your game, you have to reduce the resolution and then use RSR and it will upscale to your native resolution. For example, if you use a 1440p monitor, instead of putting the resolution at 1440p and then choose, for example, ultra quality or the quality mode in the FSR, you need to go reduce the resolution to 1080p and then activate the RSR in your options, okay? What I want with this is that RSR should work as the FSR. Basically, you should go into the drivers, you should select the RSR and you should have the several modes of performance. Performance, quality and ultra quality, for example. And the RSR would automatically reduce the render scale and then upscale to your native resolution. That's what I want with RSR in the future. The third one is once again related with Radeon Super Resolution and it is basically the fact that when using Radeon Super Resolution you can't use the Radeon Chill nor the Radeon Image Sharpening and so on so on so on. Now, if you want the minimum uh, input latency available and you want to lock your FPS, you want to use Chill instead of the frame rate target control or instead of the River Tunner statistics server, okay? Because Radeon Chill has way less input lag than both the frame rate target control 
and the Riva, the Riva Turner statistics server, the RTSS, okay? If I'm using gradient super resolution, is because I want higher FPS and lower input latency, so basically lower frame times and so on. And by not being able to use chill and having to use F's, uh, frame rate target control or the RTSS, I'm adding input latency again. All I want is RSR to work with Radeon Chill as well. The fourth one is about Radeon Relief, which is the application you use, you use inside the Radeon software to record your gameplays. Now, one thing is that when it was released in the beginning, it could be used with any AMD hardware. So basically, if you have the Radeon software, you can use the Radeon Relief, you can record and you can do streaming as well. Being it mobile, being it APU, being it doesn't matter. Anything that has an AMD GPU can use the AMD Relief and those things changed quite some time ago and I don't understand why. For example, people with desktop APUs, people with mobile chips need to install, um, for example, the Amer Nime modded drivers to be able to use recording in their mobile or their desktop APUs, which makes no sense because they can use the same codecs. For example, with the APUs, the 3400G and the, the 4650G, I used the modded drivers and I used mod modded files to use to make the recordings with those APUs and the recordings were completely fine. So what I want is AMD to just go back and introduce the recording and streaming feature for all mobile and desktop APUs. Because people with laptops and people with APUs may still want to record their gameplays or may still want to do some streaming, so just do it. It makes no sense what you did here, AMD. The fifth one is about overclocking CPUs and GPUs inside the AMD software. As you know, the AMD software is just called AMD Software Adrenaline Edition instead of AMD Radeon Software Adrenaline Edition. And that's because they now have CPU overclocking as well in the, um, the AMD software. Since they have CPU overclocking as well, they decided to call it AMD Settings instead of Radeon Settings which is okay for me. What it is not okay is then when, for example, you're making a profile, an overclocking profile, it will save your overclocking profile of your GPU and your CPU in the same file. So imagine if you have, for example, uh, an overclocking profile for your, for your CPU and an overclocking profile for your GPU. You can't just save an overclocking profile for your GPU and your CPU separately you will save it in the same file. So for example, if you want to run your CPU at default, once you go there and load your profile for your GPU, it will automatically restart your computer and overclock it like you had before in that same overclocking file. So what I want here is AMD to put GPU and CPU overclocking in different tabs. One tab for CPU overclocking, one tab for GPU overclocking. So when I, I am actually loading or saving the profiles of my GPU, I will not be saving or loading the profiles of the CPU as well. I think it's common sense. Once again, I don't know why AMD is doing this. Just do it separately. If you want to overclock both things, if you think you can overclock both things, do it in different tabs because the profiles will mess things up. It's not like the first, it's not the first time, not even the, I, and I don't think it will be the last time that I will, that I was loading a profile, sorry, I was loading a profile and my computer got restarted because that profile had a previous CPU overclock that I'm not using now, so the computer will restart to apply that CPU overclock while all I wanted was just to overclock the GPU with that profile. So AMD, just do it, put different tabs for CPU and GPU overclocking. So the sixth one has to do with, uh, with the files from your recordings, okay? From your recordings or streamings, but mostly recordings, the software will create a file. One thing that happened like over six months ago is that AMD started doing things like Nvidia. So when you create, for example, you're playing PUBG, let's say, or Warzone, you're, you're playing Warzone and you are making a gameplay recording. So it will automatically create a folder of Call of Duty Warzone with that recording in there. 
I do understand that for most people it would be the best thing to do, but for example, when I'm recording the gameplays, I don't want that. I just want the files right away inside the location that I asked it for. So here, what I wanted was AMD to give you uh, a way to choose if you actually want the software to create a folder with the game's name or if you just want it to put the video file in that raw location. That's what I want, to choose an option instead of being forced to have that folder with the game's name, okay? That's all I want. Now the seventh and the final thing is the filters. Okay, the color filters, for example, or the video filters. Now, um, NVIDIA does have a lot of filters inside the software itself. AMD recently, and I, by recently I mean some months ago, added also the option of Vivid Gaming, which enhances the colors for you to be able, for example, to, to make the distinction in between, for example, when playing first-person shooter games, to make, the to make easily the distinction um, in between the player and the background, okay? It will kind of pump up the colors for you to be able to distinguish the player amongst all other things of the background, of the background okay? But we also just have one, which is the Vivid Colors or the Vivid Gaming, and we should have more, okay? Like NVIDIA, you can use filters, you can add the filters in the software, I think. So basically what I want is that. What I want and what more people want is that. For AMD to, to kind of have the option to add manual filters, for example, instead of just the color changes, manual filters, or maybe just have more default filters instead of just the Vivid Gaming. That would be cool. This, although it is the last one, it is not one of the things that I like the most. I prefer all the other things, the, I, I prefer more the other things before, but this one would also be nice for some people. So yeah. So guys, that's all for today's video about seven things that I would like to see changed or added in the AMD software. Um, just don't forget, leave your comment in the comment section, let me know what you think about this video and let me know what things would you like to see added or changed in the Radeon software because, as always, I want to know and I think that people want to know as well. And well, thank you a lot, thank you a lot for, yeah, 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 yeah what the fuck am I saying? Thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video because that really helps a lot. Once again, leave your comment in the comment section and see you in the next video, guys.